Hi Fairy Dust Bunnies, how are you? I hope you're having a very Merry Christmas. It's just Christmas Day here at the moment, 6.37am, so I was out at church last night obviously doing the Christmas carols and things, so it was really, really great. I've done a bit of vlogging. I'm just getting ready to get my Christmas meal all set up. I've, obviously my dogs are actually going to be having a normal non-vegan Christmas obviously because my wife's obviously non-vegan due to her cancer and things like that so they're having a big turkey roast and things like that I'm obviously having my vegan roast and things so oh it's 1.30am here hi Jeannie how are you hope you're doing well I hope you're having a lovely lovely Christmas whatever time it is where you are at the moment I've actually like I say I've got a lot on today I'm actually going to church this morning again for the second service so that should be another busy morning I feel as if I've not been away because I was at church last night about it was half eleven right through to half eh, about one o'clock in the morning so we were doing a lot of Christmas carols it was all in the dark in the church it was absolutely lovely yeah you're the only vegan here as well I say yeah it's but that's, that's it, and it's compassion and respect for everybody. I feel that's something that's been missed a lot this year in 2016 in the vegan community. This constant attacking people because they're not vegan and things. We should be trying to educate people and showing them the way. Remembering that there was a time that we weren't vegan as well. Try and put ourselves into these people's shoes and take it from their perspective about how we would have felt when we weren't vegan because we've all been there nobody was ever born vegan and we weren't ra probably raised vegan for most of us it's all about learning uh, evolving and just being the best version of yourself as you possibly can be so i've got i got a lot of christmas gifts like i say i actually got this it's a mini monopod basically what it does is you can put it on your phone and it's got a screen capture that you can press a button and it captures photos and obviously your your, your uh, video and such likes as well so that's one of my gifts that I got obviously as well as being a massive Star Wars fan I obviously got the, the Rogue One lava lamp yeah, yeah like Fairy Dust Bunny says I'm sorry of the fight and drama and finger pointing yeah exactly 100% Actually, for my PlayStation VR, I actually get the Robinson's The Journey. It's basically it's like a dinosaur type thing, so that should be absolutely amazing. But FIFA 17, of course, I'm a football fan. I've got to have that. I'm a ex semi professional footballer. Obviously, as well, I get the Drive Club VR for the, the, the PlayStation VR headset as well. new video camera so as well so that will be to do my my youtube videos as well hdr cx40 so i got a lot of things actually hi duchess uh, as well i'll get obviously as well i get the ac milan football shirt as well <laughs> Manchester United football shirt of course jo John Convertible Snitch will love this we're, we're two Star Wars freaks so I get the Stormtrooper fleecy jammies so that, that's them as well another one I got Captain America sleep suit these were all bought by my wife so if I can get this up right that's the Captain America sleep suit. Yeah, the, the jammies are amazing. And as well, I got Marvel, Marvel uh, fleecy jammies too. And of course, another Star Wars one. I mean, you know, you know me. The Rogue One T-shirt. So I got that. So brand new video camera for my YouTube videos, everything, and another cracking one. This is one I absolutely loved. Brilliant, brilliant jumper. Like I say, my wife got me that last week, so I got that early. This uh, hoodie, friends not food. So, lovely, lovely stuff. So I've got her quite a lot of stuff, obviously. I got her a, I got her a sound bar for her, her music. I got her a Robbie Williams CDs, because she loves that. Obviously as well, I got her things like uh, chocolates. I got her some pyjamas. 
Well, I've got a quite a lot of stuff, but I'm, I'm looking forward to get into these games because these drive club and things like that should be amazing. Like I say, in the FIFA 17, and especially for the VR, the, the Robinson's journey, that should be great. But yeah, absolutely amazing. But I was going to touch up on, I got a lot of kind of hassle online recently about because I've been out vegan shopping for my Christmas dinners and such likes, and I was buying obviously non-vegan food for my dog's Christmas dinner, right, I want to put this in perspective here, dogs in my opinion are carnivores, we do as much as we possibly can, but I don't know enough research to actually feed my dogs vegan and things, I know especially with cats, they thrive on a non-vegan diet because they need taurine and such likes, so there's a little case and study that I'd like to touch upon here, yeah, like Fairy Bus does when he says, I won't feed my pu puppies vegan 100%. But this is about the, the first off, the cats. This is a story from Australia. It says, the case of a, a kitten near death brought to an animal hospital in North Melbourne, Australia, provides another example of why it's important for pet owners to understand the dangers of feeding biologically inappropriate diets. The kitten was extremely weak and collapsed when it arrived at the clinic. The kitten's vegan owners has been feeding it a diet of potatoes, rice, milk and pasta. So it's not fully vegan, so I think they're, they're meaning vegan milk as in almond milk, I'm not 100% sure about that when they mention milk, but it says vet staff provided the kitten with IV fluids, a heating pad and meat to eat. He stayed in the hospital for three days and when the owners came to pick him up, they were given meat to feed the kitten at home. Cats, are, like I say, are obligatory carnivores. Obligate basically means be necess necessity. Biologically essens essential for survival, like I say. This means that like, an obligatory carnivore, like a cat, must eat meat to survive. It has to do with, obviously, the acid, the amino acid profile and such likes in the animal tissue, which is actually a complete profile, like I say, versus the amino acids provided by plant proteins. So like I say, the quality of protein is also very, very important. The biological value, which is BV, it says, is a protein measure of the bioavailability of its amino acid content. Better quality proteins have higher BVs, meaning they're easy for the body to digest, absorb and use properly. Like I say, it's never just about the amount of protein that you're actually feeding your cat, it's also about the source, animal versus like plant-based, and uh, the bioavailability as well. Like I say, it's really important to remember that cats aren't obviously designed to eat carbohydrates, the bodies just don't produce the enzymes required to actually digest the carbs. Like I say, your, your cat is obviously designed to eat regularly small, small amounts, highly digestible and energy packed food that obviously provides optimal levels of vitamins, minerals, micronutrients, in other words, animal meat basically. So I've written all this down, like I say, and another actual a case at an animal hospital in Mel Melbourne, Australia, I say, offers another opportunity to obviously warn pet owners of obviously the dangers of feeding biologically inappropriate diets to kittens and dogs as well. Like I say, this kitten was actually brought in in bad shape. It was extremely weak and it actually collapsed when it came in. So like I say, it was all almost non-responsive, like I say, as it turns out, the kitten's owners, like I say, had obviously been feeding it the, the potatoes and the rice and such likes, so like I say, for felines, eating meat is biologically essential for survival, like I say, not all carnivores are obligatory carnivores, like I say, in flat fact, most aren't, but cats are, as obligate carnivores, kittens can't digest plant-based foods at obviously efficiently, nor do plant-based foods actually provide the, the nutrition that they actually need. So like I say, obliquely and carnivore equals cats basically, must eat meat to survive. This is because the animal, the, the protein in the animal tissue is a complete amino acid. So like I say, why carbs don't actually cut it for kittens, like I say, cats are obviously designed to eat carbohydrates and in fact, their, their bodies don't produce the enzymes required to actually digest carbs. The only carb, carbs that cats eat in the wild have a, already been digested basically in their prey. Like I say, when a feline cat obviously eats a prey animal, the stomach obviously contents of the, the prey contain a certain amount of easily digested carbohydrates. 
Your cat's digestive system isn't actually designed to actually break down veggies to release the nutrients that they provide. Whereas, obviously, the plant-based omnivores and herbivores, they have slow digestion. Food passes quickly, just within a few hours, basically, like I say, through the, the GI tract, which is obviously an, an obligate carnivore. So I say, this is why like kittens are designed to eat relatively small amounts with highly digestible, energy-packed food that obviously provides the amount of vitamins and minerals it needs. So, like I say, basically... You, <laughs> If you love your pets, you would do anything to obviously give them the most e great health possible. Then, but it's actually learning enough to actually look into this type of things, because I say it's really, really it can be really, really dangerous in some ways. Nice to see you here, Chef Vegan. I'm just talking away a bit. I was out getting my, my my dogs and my cats. Obviously, their their Christmas dinner and things and like. And obviously, a lot of people were saying, "Oh, why are you being you buying non-vegan meat when you're obviously a vegan and things like that?" But uh, see, I've done a lot of research into this, and I've obviously written a lot of these things down as well. So, like I say, dogs and cats are obviously carnivorous in nature, as I say. Oops, sorry guys, I'm trying to catch up here. So like I say, dogs and cats are obviously carnivorous in nature. Like I say, unfortunately, some consumers don't think of us obviously that when we're purchasing our, our pet's food. The fact of the matter is that pet food is actually packed full of greens, veggies and nutrients that are primarily in our wild cats or dogs' actual diet. Like I say, cats in particular, they have been labelled obligate carnivores, meaning that they must eat, obviously, meat to actually survive. Like I say, dogs and cats' bodies have actually adapted to the diet, obviously, that we feed them because they, basically they must. But studying a, the, the body of a cat or a dog actually shows that they were, they were actually made for consuming actual other animals. Like I say, feeding pets a plant-based diet has obviously become very, very popular amongst the vegan community, as we all know. Like I say, while this actually is a lot more ethical to actual practice for vegan pet parents, it's obviously not normal for a cat or a dog. So like I say, commercial pet food obviously usually consists of obviously greens, fruits, vegetables and obviously meat. Nice to see you here, Fluffkins. I'll try vegan Brett Keen video. I loved my, my discussion with Brett Keen. I hope everybody can go on and uh, fan him up. He's a great, great guy as well. But like I say, we've done a great uh, conversation and obviously my eating disorder recovery and basically talking about Jesus and things like that. I'm actually going to talk, touch upon some of the things in the Bible just very, very shortly. But like I say, basically it says it does actually have some meat in it. I'll say vegan or vegetarian food actually contains ethically sourced plant-based proteins, grains and vegetables as a substitute for meat proteins as well. No, I say even though the, the ingredients are more wholesome than commercially pr produced food, I say sadly many animals have actually been fed and a diet of high, have actually developed health problems as a result of this. Like I say there are a number of reasons to obviously take your pet off a commercially produced diet, including obviously the fact that the and especially cats are obviously not able to break down carbohydrates nearly as well as humans can. Like I say just because the, the pet can obviously digest the ingredient is at a much slower rate than us humans, does actually not mean that we're actually it's necessary or, or good for a pet's actual body. Like I say there are a large amount of calories in green rich foods which can lead actually to a pet to obesity and obviously many health issues as well. So like I say, just keep in mind that and your cats and dogs' bodies are not able to digest things like animal, like such as they're able to digest animal proteins and fats better than we can actually. Thanks very much for that, like I say. So why should we actually be feeding our cats? Our cat, I say, always check with your vet before changing your pet's diet. There can obviously be a great amount of factors that can obviously be determining if your pet should actually or shouldn't be eating that. But I say, studies actually show that pets are able to actually digest some greens, and this obviously may, may help your cat to, or dog to actually keep you regular. But I say, however, animals 
like dogs and cats shouldn't obviously get to excess as like too much water as we do. So feeding them dehydrated food is actually harder for them to process. I say they may actually need to take more water to obviously compensate. So like I say, suggested diets for dogs obviously include about half meat and bone that is obviously high in moisture as well. So like I say, carbs are obviously broken down to vegetation to obviously keep them regular and obviously some fat. Obviously with this type of diet, the boy, the boy, the, your, your dog's body and such like can actually burn through the fat and obviously the carbs for energy and obviously won't have to eat as much obviously or drink as much water. Nice to see you here at Blue, Blue Ren as well. Making veganism great again, that's what we're all about, opening the doors to everybody, that's what it should be and try to be compassionate so I hope we can keep moving on and make 2017 a great, great year. So like I say, cats on the other hand, they obviously need mostly meat and fat obviously as well, their bodies don't obviously know what to do with the many, too many carbs and obviously our plant based proteins. Again, obviously think about animals in the wild, like I say, animals in the wild obviously don't know where their next meal is coming from as well. Thanks very much, Ren, I really appreciate that, I'm doing absolutely great mate, I really appreciate that and I hope you're having a great Christmas as well. So obviously their bodies obviously savour and extract all the proteins and nutrients that are obviously needed to survive. Like I say, of course your, your pets are obviously are not wild animals, but they're obviously the domesticated versions of the wild of obviously brethren basically. So basically, touching upon how do you feed your pet in a most ethical way, like I say, for some research on yourself basically is what the most nutrient rich food obviously for your cat or dog. Check with your vet and obviously decide what would be best for your particular breed of animal or best for playing around with your animal's food in a, a way that can obviously have serious consequences. So you've got, you've got to be really, really careful. In my mind, I noticed when I got out to the back garden and I've, I've gave my dogs like rice, carbohydrate based kind of diet, it seems to pass through their, their GI tract right away. This is because basically your dog and cats have got a smaller digestive system. They're basically bred actually through nature to actually take in animal proteins and get rid of them quickly. So a, a plant-based diet basically just goes right through your dog and your cat and I know this only too well. So like I say, I will admit that being a vegan it is sometimes obviously hard to obviously allow yourself to produce food that you know is coming from an exact thing and I'm not trying to support that in any way like I say but however as a pet owner I have obviously a responsibility to, to my animal to check and do proper research in the bio, biology of the animal care for. Like I say it's not a, the animal's fault that they're a descendant or a, a carnivore like I say the wild cousins eat nothing but meat even though these animals are domesticated and may actually be able to eat some things in addition to meat. Like I say, they still eat meat to supplement them in ways that nutrients to keep a healthy body going basically as well. So that's my kind of take on things guys. I, I, I really, really hope that kind of clears things up as well. Just checking up the chat here. If anybody wants to jump into the guest queue, please do so as well. Nice to see you Chris Jai as well. So like I say, obviously, I wanted to touch upon, like I say, our message on here is obviously ultimately how we will be remembered through the lines of the, when people look on vegans, like I say, and obviously possible future vegans. So we need to start thinking really, really carefully. At the end of the day, we all make mistakes, but we need it to go through this to actually grow instead of doing things like call outs and things. We should start to be try to educate people and give them praise and basically throw in some facts as well showing them how the vegan lifestyle can help them but basically stop putting people in boxes saying oh you're 80 10 10 or you're flexitarian or you're, you're rotto 4 or you're just vegan and things like that at the end of the day every single bit we can do exactly it's about education 100% that's what it's all about I say rather than try to turn people vegan I say we should actually be we're caught in getting the amount of subscribers and things. That's what I've noticed a lot. People are obviously focused upon getting their self, their social profile. They're more caring about growing their YouTube channel and actually getting getting as many subscribers than actually that basically their online status and such like. So it should be trying to help people, educate them, like I say. Nobody, like I say, is a guru, a, a guru basically. We all learn every day and it's about learning through one another and trying to uh, apply it into our lives. 
And to obviously to move on, we all need to make a stand and not watch or partake in any single drama at all. So exactly 50 shades of grey, veganism is not black and white issue anymore. There are many different subtypes, 100%, let I say. Lonesome Bonesome says, just got back from a late night cruise. I hope you had a great night. Try vegan, yeah, it's a business decision. Usually I agree, exactly. But see, obviously, if we want to be advocates for change, we obviously need to put ourselves in the shoes of people that's non-vegan and remember how we were before we started transitioning. As we all struggle at some points, I see, anybody that says they're 100% vegan, like I say, come off it. At the end of the day, you would need to get totally off grid to be 100% vegan. Basically, live in Mars. Think about it. There's animal products in your wall, your, your wall paint. There's animal products in your tar tires. There's animal products in the pavement you walk on. There's animal products in the photos you use. There's animal products in everything. We can't be 100% vegan. We've just got to do it as much as we possibly can. I really appreciate that, Blue Ren 1, Tommy Gunn. <laughs> like I say... People obviously don't get the connection sometimes, but I say we all did at some point in position. They, they, they might change, but we just we just need to look at it that it did for us in some ways as well. But I say be receptive to hear and see when you weren't vegan and how it will obviously help being effective to others. But I say what morals, what values, what ethics, spirituality or whatever need to meet in one to obviously put these plans in motion. It's about hope, peace, love and compassion. But remember how this is obviously hypocritical to love animals and the planet, yet eat meat and contribute to the cruelty. But obviously remember that it's all small, small steps. We all get there in some way or other, but it can it can happen overnight. It can take months, it can take years. But it's about opening the doors to everybody and try to grow veganism and stop calling people out and realise that n nobody's perfect in any way we all, we've all got to grow and evolve so I say while having conversations with non-vegans remember every non-vegan is obviously a possible future vegan or a potential vegan and consider this motivation when obviously your conversation is basically going wrong or you think it's you've stepped over it I say obviously use this with your friends, your family and online as well as most of us like I say now as weren't vegan or were, were, were never born vegan let's say some of us are, some of us may be vegan like doing his sunshine or we basically we get descended for god i don't know but like, ruben bat monkey i really, really appreciate that nice to see you here but i say with all our product our, our society and our upbringing as well like I say, we were, we were all basically raised in a, a non-vegan diet and it's we're all learning as we go along. Like I say, we can only do so much, but remember the time that you weren't vegan as this will help you actually connect mentally with non-vegans as we forget this time and it seems to kind of light years away recently. But our attitudes to animals, people in the world are so incomparable now to what they were. So like I say, basically my message here is be the vegan you wish you had met before you became vegan. And it's basically adopting this, it's basically like an adopting not shock mentality and I feel that's what it's all about. Duchess is saying I found a really good short film in ve veganism, it's called The Herd. I'll need to check that out Duchess, I really, really appreciate that. So like I say I've got about another 10 minutes to go guys, I mean... I, I really, it's all about growing veganism. Let's make 2017 the year that we want to be. Like I say, I do a lot of vegan activism and, and things. Obviously, we save the movement in Scotland and things like that. But it's not about that. Like I say, it's about doing whatever you can do. Like I say, you're as much a vegan activist at just doing the vegan lifestyle because every single day you're saving animals by adopting a plant based diet. But it's about doing as much as you can within your realms of what's possible for you. So, I hope you all have a, a, a really very Merry Christmas, guys. I really, really appreciate all your love and support. I want to touch upon a little things in the Bible here, basically, that's, that I think is basically important in a great, great way. Like I say, the first one is basically touching upon Christmas, like I say, is in the reading Luke 2, chapter 1 to 20. So it, it says here in Luke chapter 120, At the time Augustus Caesar sent an order 
to all people in the countries that were under Roman rule. The order said that they must list their names in a register. This was the first registration taken while Quirintus was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own towns to be registered. So Joseph left Nazareth to a town in Galilee. He went to the town of Bethlehem in Judea. This town was known as the town of David. Joseph went there because he w he went from a family of David. Joseph registered with Mary because she was engaged to marry him. Mary was now pregnant. While Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem, this time came for her to have the baby. She gave birth to her son. There were no rooms left at the inn, so she wrapped the baby with cloths and laid him in a box where animals are fed. That night some shepherds were in the fields nearby watching their sheep. An angel of the Lord stood before them. The glory of the Lord was shining around them and suddenly they became very frightened. The angel said to them, Don't be afraid because I'm bringing you some good news. It will be joy to all the people. Today your Saviour was born in David's town. He is Christ the Lord. This is how you will know him. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a feeding box. There a very large group of angels from heaven joined the first angel. All the angels were praising God, saying, Give glory to God in heaven, and on earth let there be peace to the people who praised God. Then, then the, she the angels let the shepherds and went back to heaven. The shepherds said to each other, Let us go to Bethlehem and see the things that has happened. We will see that the thing that Lord told us about. So the shepherds went quickly and found Mary and Joseph, and the shepherds said, saw the baby lying in a feeding box. Then they told what, what, what the angels had said to them about this child. Everyone was amazed when they heard the shepherds said to them, Mary had these things in her heart. She continued to think about them. Then the shepherds went back to their sheep, praising God and thanking them for everything that they had seen and heard. It was just as the angel had told them. Teddy da God, yeah, the Bible is real, 100% mate, I'm a, a firm big believer in God. So the second one is actually in John chapter 1, it says, Before the world began, there was a word, the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning, all things were made through him, nothing was made without him. In him there was life, the life that was light for the people of the world. The life shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overpowered the light. There was a man named John who was sent by God. He came to the people about the light. Through him all people could hear the light about the light and believe. John was not the light, but he came to tell people about the light. The true light was coming into the world, the true light to us all. The word... The word was in the world, the world was made through him, but the world did not know him. He came to the world that was his own, and each, the people did not accept him. But some people did accept him, they believed in him. To them he gave them the right to become the children of God. They did not become his children in the human way. They were not born because of his desire or wish of some man, they were born of God. Blue then says no people are just too sensitive and need to learn. Yeah, I think that's one thing we're going to have to really kind of learn about is people, we're going to have to start kind of stop attacking people and basically you know, take a joke at times back and forward as well. But like I say, all these kind of things where people start getting personal, that's what it, I, I really hate. Like I say, stop attacking people's kind of mental illness, stop attacking people's family, bringing people's children into it their colour, their race, like, let's say their spirituality, basically, yeah, personal attacks are over in 2017, 100%, that's what we need to stop. So is anybody in the guest queue, like I say, guys, if you want to, can I jump on for, like I say, I've got 10 minutes to go. I hope you are all having a, an amazing, amazing Christmas anyway. I've obviously got my vegan roast that I'm going to be having this morning and I'm just busy cooking my dog's uh, non-vegan Christmas, which I was touching upon as well. Thanks for becoming a fan, Teddy the God. I really appreciate that. Fluffkinzilla says, I don't beat myself up over that. It was my fault for having an eating disorder because messing up my body so much. Yeah, it's never your fault for having an eating disorder, Fluffkinzilla. Don't ever think that. Like I say, there's many biological and genetic factors that bring that into play. Like I say... 
something can basically just trigger it, and that's what it's all about. I know that only too well, starting with, with losing my mum and such likes, but it's basically like evolving and just doing everything you can each single day. Lonesome Bonson says it's been okay, hopefully getting a high-speed blender so I can start sm slamming in the kale. Amazing. I've got a Nutri blender that, and, and that's one thing I use quite a lot. The fruits, the vegetables, adding them in a bit of spinach and such like some almond milk in it. Happy Christmas, Blue Wren, let's say. Here is to getting healthy and making veganism great again, 100%. 2017 is going to be the year for us all, I say. Come together as one. Try vegan, like he says, not your fault, I agree, 100%. Fluffkins, I really appreciate you saying that, Tommy, I always think it's my fault, guess that. That's exactly the eating disorder brain telling you that, like I say. Your eating disorder will basically latch on to anything, like I say. It'll make you think everything's your fault, and basically to keep you in your eating disorder, and the eating disorder is your identity. You're more than your eating disorder, like I say. You, you only start at recovering for your eating disorder and still you, until you start choosing recovery every single day, like I say. We all get bad days, but it's about going to bed at night, waking up the next morning, choosing recovery and getting on there. Lonesome Bonesome says, I need you guys to motivate me, I need to go to the gym. Yeah, like I say, I would love to start getting into a bit of gym again, but I'm going through a lot of problems at the moment. I actually get told at the weekend there that I'm probably suffering from type 1 diabetes which is a big problem because my, my my dad actually had type 1 diabetes and it runs right through my male side of the family so I get my results in two weeks so fingers crossed I've not got it but it looks as if I'm borderline at the moment so I, I won't know a 100% at the moment. Oh Mac Vegan's here, lovely to see you Mac Vegan, I hope you and the family are having a great time like I say. Merry Christmas brother as well. I hope you have an absolutely amazing Christmas. Mac, everybody fan up Mac Vegan in it as well, he's a great, great guy, like I say, he's he's for the UK as well, he's one of the kind of people I really look up to, he's got a great message as well, amazing, amazing person. Ruben says, I'm in the, the queue, there's nobody in the queue, Ruben, it's saying no guests at the moment, mate. So, what's your plans, Mac Vegan, uh, what are you doing today? i seen Blue Ren, you said you were going to get your kids over Boxing Day, that should be amazing mate, I hope you have a great, great time, like I say, it's a bit, obviously spend it with your, your kids instead of on you now and things like that, you know that only too well, That you're, you, it's great, I hope you're getting a lot of time with your kids and things like that, you really, really deserve it and like I say, have them for two weeks, brilliant, like I say, I hope you have a great, great time, I've obviously got, I watched your, your recent one where you obviously had the, the the, kind of, the, the wee kids' bikes and obviously your surfboards and things like that. I like I liked the, the bit uh, that you done with showing you your, your, the video where you had the, the fruit and vegetables and the, the tortilla wraps and the Doritos and you were like, ah, just cut out this bit. <laughs> Mac Vegan says, Christmas dinner with the family. By the way, my channel name is now called Mad Mac. <laughs> Mad, Mad Mac, Mad Max. <laughs> I like that. Try Vegan says I'm in the guest queue, right? I'll jump up there and check you out. Get Try Vegan. Ruben Batmonkey's in the guest queue. I'll guest him first and then... So, if you want to jump in the guest queue, try Vegan. So it's connecting Ruben here. Fluff Gonzalez says, I'm so excited for my son to open his stuff in the morning, I want to get a video. Yeah, that's what it's all about, seeing your little kids' faces and things like that in the hell. Yeah, I'm guessing, Ruben, here it just seems connecting here, it keeps guessing. So jump back in the, the guest queue, Ruben, I'll, I'll guess try vegan at the moment.
declined. Try it again, Rebecca. John, John, V, nice to see you in the chat here. Well, we're basically just talking about making veganism great again and things like that. Hi, Ruben. Hey, what's up, Tommy? How you doing, mate? Yeah, so first, the earlier of business. Got the bear giving Love him it, a mate. hug for you. Love that, mate. I really, really appreciate that and hug to you as well. I'll, I'll show you some of the gifts I got here. You'll like this. I get the rogue one. I get the rogue one uh, lava lamp. Yeah, cool. I've uh, as well. I get the st the Star Wars fle fleecy jammies. The storm stormtrooper. Yeah, you can go ahead and send them out. Yeah, uh, definitely. Get the Captain America onesie as well. Oh. Well, seriously, yeah, God, I'll say in late one. <laughs> I love is, Captain America. This is a great one, this. Friends Not Food, I love this jumper, what I say. The, 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 the Marvel superhero pyjamas as well. Another one. You like this, you like this, Ruben? Rogue One t-shirt. <laughs> So I agree, yeah, so, I agree with yeah, go ahead and box all of us up. I definitely will, mate. Send them out my way. <laughs> and as well, obviously, I get my new my new camera for, for making my YouTube videos. It's the Sony HDR CX40 as well. Yeah, um, yeah, don't have the same light over. The remote control for your, uh, basically you put your phone on it and it can help you take videos without actually pressing a button as well, so. Oh. And a few new computer games, I got this one for the VR, the Drive Club VR for the PlayStation VR headset. Oh, FIFA 17 as well for the PlayStation 4. And I got this oh, one, man. Robinson's Journey for the PlayStation VR, VR. It's basically like a dinosaur thing where it's, you're inside the, the, the dinosaurs are way back in the, uh, the the dinosaur era, so that should be great. Not oh, bad. So it's been, it's been a no bad Christmas, it really has. It's early in the morning here, like I say, it's obviously 7.14 as well, so. Yeah, well, yeah, let's go. So what, what's your kind of Christmas plans today, what are you up to? Yeah, I got nothing going on. Gonna walk down to a uh, Starbucks later on today. Yeah. Get myself so, a uh, latte. Yeah. And then if you're late, the, who knows? You get the chai latte? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. They've, they've actually got one in Costa over here. It's a Christmas... Uh, vegan one that they're doing it's a gingerbread Christmas one it's absolutely amazing mm -hmm. yeah I might have to try out one of those yeah you should yeah, hopefully get it yeah I never really uh, plan it to help just you know, I'll walk on to and later decide when I get there yeah I hope you have an amazing, amazing Christmas. And John John V says there, I love racing games. Unfortunately, I sold my PS4. Oh, yeah. I see, I don't get enough time to actually play a lot of my video games because I'm too busy, obviously, editing a lot of videos and things like that for YouTube and such like. So, but, but I say, hopefully, we can we can make make veganism open to the doors to everybody this year. Like I say, this is what it's all about. I've touched upon a lot of this in my video at the very, very start here and. We need to start kind of opening the doors to everybody and try to help everybody transition. But remember that we weren't vegan at one point. Put ourselves in their shoes and basically make it open to everybody. This is what it's all about. So how are you? How are you feeling, uh, Ruben? Since uh, how's your kind of vegan diet and things going? Like that? Oh well. Yeah, my yeah, uh, vegan is uh, meals going pretty well. I know you obviously said you were kind of 
uh, suffering with kind of missing meeting things like that. How's that obviously went? Um, well, you know, I can't say that I don't uh, want to eat meat. But, like, yeah, you know, I think about meat. Uh, you know, like, that like, was. Well, yeah, meat's kind of gross. It actually takes a bit, roughly about, they say about three, three months I think it is, if anybody in the chat could probably tell me better, for obviously your system to adapt and stop kind of missing meat and things like that. Obviously, how long have you actually been vegan? I think it's about a month or so, isn't it? Yeah, just a little over a month. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. sure it roughly takes about kind of three months roughly to obviously to start kind of getting out of that kind of mindset and such likes is kind of missing that and your body to obviously adapt to the plant-based proteins and such yeah 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 well well it's been a bit of a struggle but hey i'm getting there thanks for the applause and and see magic so what's can your your kind of favorite vegan foods and such likes um well, you know, I'll tell you right now, I've been eating a lot of, uh, gardenia meat. Yeah, I see a lot of that. It's, they're actually talking about they're going to be rolling that across Europe lately, so we'll be getting it over here in Scotland. We only get, like, corn and things like but Big Screen Bird, he does a lot of, kind of, reviews for, obviously, gardening and such likes. They look amazing. Right. Well, uh, well. well I heard you were reading something from the Bible. Yeah. So uh, if I share one of my favorite Bible uh, verses. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm not really a Christian. So, yeah, you know, maybe I don't have as much right as you do to quote scripture. Of course you do, well, everybody's got a right. Well, you know, there is one verse in there. I believe it's Ezekiel 23. Uh, be mindful when entertaining strangers. For it will seem some have entertained angels unaware. Yeah. And definitely go up with smell uh, Merry Christmas. Yeah, and Merry Christmas everybody in the chat. Love to you all. I say let's make veganism great again in 2017. Let's not make things personal attacks. Like I say, it's, you, it's okay to attack the subject. Don't attack the person. That, that's what it's all about. You can argue your points and things like that. Don't attack people personally. Let's like see, att attacking people's mental illness, attacking people's body shape, their colour, their spirituality, everything like that. It's okay to argue no. the point. It's a, g a great analogy. Att attack the attack the ball, not the man. <laughs> it's very, very true. Mm. Merry Christmas, yeah, and see magic. Uh, yeah, We'll play, play the ball, not the man. That's that, That's one of the things I always remember. My my uh, manager, when I was a, a semi-professional footballer, always says, he says, "Effing, play the play the ball, not the man. Don't get sent off." <laughs> that's true, and it's a very same in life. Play the ball, not the man. Hmm. Well, yeah, of course, at the same time, well. Some things that happen, they just rub you the wrong way. And you, then you totally. get kind of irritated. Yeah, yeah I think but, that yeah, well, everybody can relate to that, like I say. We've just got to kind of try and look at the things, and some things are, some people have got a kind of different how would you put it they've got a different outlook at things some people have got just mean things in a joke some of us take it in a, in a way that we, we take it out of context like I say everybody's different in things so we need to kind of look at things and say was this a personal attack was it a joke like I say some people have got a, we're all kind of we're all built differently genetically <laughs> physiologically and mentally as well <laughs> unfortunately we're all crazy in our own way I suppose 
Yeah, so, you know, we love Blu-ray and see that, you know, you have to be a bit sensitive. But, you know, I don't entirely agree with that. You know, if I were real uh, late sensitive, and I'd be like, yeah, friend said, uh, quote the line from Forrest Gump. Yeah, I don't like that. So get out of here, friend. So but being sensitive, you know, well, I want to thank you, you know, how is he intending to uh, say this? Is it like a uh, joking or does Blue Brain really want to attack me? No, but it definitely does not. Uh, don't ever think that. Let's say, want to attack me. Don't ever think that. Let's say, exactly. It's like Roy Roy says there, agreed with all the little crazy vegan nutcases community, but we changed the world. Exactly. There's Blue Ren telling you that. He's joking. It he, he doesn't mean anything like that. I say, don't ever think that. Let's say, we all need to start to come together, be as one. Let's say, we can only grow the vegan community if we start bit coming together. We are, and uh, one thing I want to touch upon as well. All this Order 66 thing is, this is one of the things that I really, really think we need to stamp out. We need to stop giving them airtime. Like I say, basically we have let them in to infiltrate our vegan community. They have used, it, used us as a gateway to start getting in here and causing all this havoc. Like I say, we need to start to come together and push them aside. We can, we can only do things if we stop letting them in. Like I say, we have basically let them infiltrate us, like I say, they're trying to destroy people's lives, we cannot let that happen, exactly, no oxygen, that's what we've got to do, stamp them out, like I say, we've got to, they've, they're actually, they've, they've caused people to actually commit suicide and all kinds of sorts of things, we can stop them from happening, but we need to stop giving them time. People got obviously going on and letting them basically we go into their streams and say, oh, they're trying to change and things like that. They're not trying to change. They're trying to make a gateway into our community and infiltrate us. Stop giving them any time. Stamp them out. And that's what I feel we really need to do. This is what we've got to do in 2017. Definitely. Hmm. Well, Tommy, yeah, my food is almost done, so I'm gonna let you go so I can go off and enjoy my dinner. Have a very Merry Christmas, mate. I hope you have a really brilliant one, and know I'm always here for you. Like I say, if you ever need anything, just message me away. I'm always here for you, and I hope you have a great, great Christmas, and give that bat monkey all my love as well. Well, I'm definitely gonna give Bat Monkey a hug for you when I get back. Here, I've got one for you. I'll give you a good hug with this big guy. Here's one you'll love. Right. Daff, 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 you can oh. call him. <laughs> oh, man. How, how can anybody not love me there? Daff, you can. Here's another one. Listen to this. I hope you can hear this. Where do, I, where do I get this? Wait, and I'll push the wee button. There's a wee button here you push that it, that it does a, a sound. Hear that? He's doing the wee, the wee Darth Vegan voice. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. They were right. Everybody does try and imitate that Darth Vader. I've even, I've even got that, I've even got Big Chewy here as well. Kyler <laughs> oh, love Chewbacca. Kyler then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about Kyler Green. This fella, my BBA, uh, he's one of my favourites, I, I use that quite a lot. He's a re remote control, you use it with your mobile phone. Absolutely great. <laughs> Yeah. You can't yeah, see him. Can I get me one of those? I'll definitely send you one, mate. Definitely. 
So I hope you have an amazing, amazing Christmas. I really, really do. Hey, about okay. Well, like I said, you know, I'm here at my brother's place. I'm all alone. So, yeah, you know, Christmas is just kind of an earlier day for me. Well, you know, I'm here for you, mate. Like I say, you ever need a chat? I'm here for you, but I hope you have an amazing, amazing Christmas, whatever you're doing, let's say. I'll speak to you soon. And, and well, yeah, I don't mean to cut you off, but I really got a little simple song now. <laughs> yeah, it's just playing over and over in my head. Please, no, be done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm gonna go nuts if I don't hear it. <laughs> and so, Tommy, sending y'all the love in the world. Uncle you Bear. You as well. You as well. And everybody else. Please, yeah, everybody. Blue uh, Ray and Malgazad. Everybody yeah, in the chat, please. Some please some give me Ruben, a I hug for you. Yeah, definitely. Fan me up. And well, I'll speak to you when I get the chance. You as well, mate. I'll speak to you very soon. Yeah, hey, mate. And show, tra you with love. show trailers, please stop kind of th these things in the chat here, like I say. That this is what we're trying to kind of stop here, like I said. Terrible. Hmm. And, and show trailers. Yeah, let me know where you are. Well, uh, come and talk about this all in person. Speak to you soon, Ruben. Love you so much, mate, and have a great, great Christmas. Yeah. Everybody else, sending you all the love in the world. Bye, guys. So a uh, great, great guy, guys. There's one person left in the guest queue. I'll guess him before I go off. It's Fluffkin Zara, my dear friend. So guesting Fluffkin Zara. Dodo Gay Hanek. How are you? How you doing? <laughs> love, love that girl. <laughs> oh, thank you for becoming a fan. I broke my phone, Tommy. I seen you saying that, yeah. Like, I have been having the <laughs> worst 2016, and I can't wait for 2017. <laughs> Dodo, Dodo Guy Hynek says his life must be so hard. Yeah, he, he's a great, great guy, like I say, an amazing, amazing person, Dodo Guy Hynek. I'll actually fan you up as well at the moment. Hope you can fan us up as well. So normal. <laughs> I, I wouldn't really necessarily say I'm normal. But... Who, who, who is actually normal, like I say? None of us are normal. What is normal anyway, like I say? I, I don't believe that we've all got our silly quirks and things like like I said a little while ago though, we've all got our craziness in some way and I think <laughs> you know it's normal. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Mac Vegan Mac, Mac Vegan? Oh my goodness. Yeah, Mac Vegan's an amazing, amazing guy, like I say. He's from the UK as well. So what's your kinda Christmas? What's up what are you doing for Christmas? Well, I'm super excited because it's like the first year my son can actually open presents. Yeah, so, that's what it's all about. So, so what, have you, what have you gotten? Well, you're going to have to just watch my YouTube channel and find out. <laughs> yeah, so everybody, fan her up, check out her YouTube channel, let her see what, you, what she's got for the kids. <laughs> yeah, my son is going to be two in February. Right, yeah. And, like, 
today was pretty, pretty good. Actually, kept my food down and had a good dinner and uh, spent some time with my son's grandmother, who we live with. So, so we had dinner with her and uh, my son's actually been sleeping the whole time, so I'm pretty happy. <laughs> I always remember that when I was a kid, I would be up all night. I always remember where my mum and my dad used to hide my presents. They used to put it in a, a big cupboard. I always used to look under the cupboard and see what I was getting. I knew before what I was getting before Christmas morning came. You know what I totally forgot to freaking do? I bought carrots with the intent to put them out for Rudolph. And then I, I just freaking made... Um, cookies and I didn't even put them out. Thankfully he's too little right now to really get yeah. the gist of it. Somebody yeah. said to me last night, they says they says, I wonder about about all the kind of vegan people all over the world. They says, I wonder what Santa's diet like is like he must be a, a mix of everything. He's he's vegan, he's flexitarian, he's raw raw to four, he eats meat. Is that, oh I says could you imagine could you imagine Santa's digestive system at the end of the night if he existed? <laughs> Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh man. I've seen some really cute ideas and stuff. I'm not doing the whole elf on the shelf. I can't, I can't be bothered. But I thought I thought of this really cool like uh, thing to do with dinosaurs. Like I've seen the Pinterest or whatever the hell um, yeah. they are where people are using like uh, toy dinosaurs and making them come to life and doing all this and I was like that's totally me I would totally do a dinosaur thing <laughs> definitely and oh so so for the people who do not know me I am Canadian so and I live in Alberta Canada now and we just got snow last night. Like, we have this much snow in front of our door, so when you open it, you have to be careful the snow doesn't come in the house. Dodo, Dodo ha, ha, Guy Hannock's spam in the chat here. Uh, excuse me, I'm actually married. I've been married for 10 years. I've got a wife. I say, I'm not. Fluff Gonzalez is one of my dear friends online, and she knows me and my wife only too well. I, I love your wife. I wish she she had more videos. You should you should make more videos with her. So for everybody in the chat, do you want to kind of tell them? Obviously, you were vegan at one point as well, and such likes, and you've obviously been through an eating disorder the similar yeah. as I was. And if you want to kind of talk about your story, so everybody kind of gets an idea of what you're all about and where you've come from to where you are now. Yeah, sure. Um, so. I've been suffering with an eating disorder since I was, well, even longer than I originally thought, because um, I used to overeat and stuff, and then because of the way I was brought up, um, for us, it was kind of a competition not to eat things, um, and so it got to the point where I started having an anorexic type of way of thinking about food, and... Um, it got to the point where I would hyperventilate and be scared to have a cookie and uh, juice and I would then start to purge <laughs> and then um, I recovered for like a few years and then I after having my son and stuff and gaining a lot of weight uh, over a hundred pounds of weight with him I relapsed again um, but now I'm struggling more so with bulimia yeah. And um so it's been a crazy, crazy ride and now I'm talking to a counselor to try and help me do things properly. I'm sorry, I'm just I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to not watch your chat here, it's getting spammed here, but Yeah, <laughs> I was just like looking over. Hello from Toronto. I'm actually from Ontario and I lived in Mississauga, so I know where Toronto is. And see, Magic's asking, what is purging? Obviously, I know what that is because, but you can uh, yeah, so, answer that. Yeah, so purging is um, when you just eat, like you can eat a lot and feel sick and then you make yourself throw up, or you could eat just a little bit and then just make yourself throw that up. Just, that is done, believe me, right now. So, yeah. It, it's not that. fun. 
that's, that's, I didn't, I just checked here, I'm blocked now, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> I didn't even, I don't, I don't know, some people are just... Oh, we all get that, unfortunately. I was obviously going to as well, a lot of the kind of vegan people are obviously in the chat here. Obviously, you had been told, obviously, you can't be vegan because you're suffering from, as it iron oh. deficiencies and such likes? Yeah, I have, um, I've, I've had really severe iron deficiencies uh, every single time I try to cut out meat and even when I was a pescapolitarian for those of you who do not know pescapolitarian pesca pescatarian is people who eat fish politarian yep. is chicken so I ate chicken and fish to try and substitute for the red meat yep. mm -hmm. to try and go that route but um, I I get really ill and tired and um, I can't unfortunately do that because I can't get enough nutrition from the, the fruits and vegetables so um, I only like maybe twice a, a month type thing eat red meat so I try and <laughs> eat as little meat as possible Lonesome Bonesome says dairy blocks iron absorption. I have heard a lot of that. My wife actually suffers the same thing, but I think the case is kind of open on that. But you know, I mean, it's it's about doing as little as much as you possibly can. Like I say, my wife can't be vegan because obviously she's suffering with ovarian cancer. She said the very, very same thing that that Fluff Kinsella here is suffering with the iron problem. I know there obviously is a lot of people who say that dairy kind of blocks it in some ways, but I know that you you basically don't have a lot of dairy, don't you? Don't you? No, I and I've severely cut back. Like if I, um, I don't even really drink. Like I don't drink two percent. I only have skimmed milk, and um, I I maybe have. Like my son has quite a bit of dairy, but I maybe have it once a week, if that. And it's sad because I used to drink a lot of milk and. I used to have a lot of dairy, but I I started cutting back. I mean, I'm not eating the healthy, like, I, I drink way too much Pepsi and stuff, because I'm trying to fill my hunger with that. And we were talking about that last time, about uh, filling our hunger with beverages. V Lonesome Bonesome says vegetarian that includes includes dairy fat content makes no difference is proven to cause iron deficiency. Yeah, I have heard a lot of that. I really, really have for a lot of scientists that it definitely does it definitely does cause a lot of iron deficiency. And I actually did suffer a lot of iron deficiency before I actually went vegan as well. So yeah, let's like say it can be obviously correlated. It does that. De it's definitely the the casein. Yeah, it's the casein. Let's like say casein is basically the byproduct of cheese, which I actually skim off the top, which is basically the whey and things like that. Yeah. I I love my fruits, my my veggies. Like I just made um a broccoli soup with cauliflower and cabbage the other day yeah oh. so uh, yeah you, you do eat a lot of vegetables uh, that's the only thing definitely what I'm saying oh yeah and like the, I diet, just, the diet is absolutely great yeah we um, like my son's grandmother is a home ec teacher so she she knows how to cook and everything and I have been trying to uh, get into eating a lot more um, varieties of veggies yeah um, because when I'm trying to like eat in general I find eating ve like vegetables or fruits are a lot easier for me to be comfortable with yeah so um, they're my like safe foods <laughs> Exactly, yeah, we all kind of know that, that the, the kind of safe foods that we deem as safe, isn't it? Yeah, and it's sad because, like, sometimes I'll save those safe foods until, like, I've gotten the the more bad foods out of the way, and then I'm like, okay, now I can... It's, it's so stupid the way that your mind thinks sometimes. Definitely. 
It's like Lonesome Bonesome says, casein concentrations are highest in the cheese. Exactly, yeah, that's exactly it. So I've got a, bit, a couple of minutes before I go off, but it's been amazing, amazing speaking to you, and I hope you and your son have an amazing, amazing Christmas, and me and Laura send you all. Everybody in the chat, please fan up Fluff Gonzalez. She's an amazing, amazing person. She's got a great YouTube channel as well. She should have a lot more subscribers than what she does, and it will grow, <laughs> I say. Well, I wish you a very, very, very Merry Christmas too, and I'm really happy that I actually caught you on, on you. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously the time difference and things and that as well. It's kind of really hard to catch each other and back and forward. So, lovely speaking to you. It really, really has been. Lovely stuff. Blah, blah, blah. If I could speak, you know. <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry, I get that as well. Sometimes it's like a, a brain fog I get. <laughs> Oh, I'm freezing. I'm so cold. Like, I can't even deal right now. <laughs> but no, I hope your wife and you have a very Merry Christmas with all your... Well, I appreciate uh, that, and you as well. <laughs> Speak to you soon. Yeah. Another amazing, amazing person, like I say, please everybody in the chat go and check her out. So it's been a great, great stream, like I say, let's make 2017, make veganism great again, let's all come together, let's educate people, let's try and bring in as many new vegans as well. So like Ruben Batmonkey says, I love her to death, like I say. So I think I'll, I'll sing these off with a wee, a wee Christmas song. Hope you have a lovely, lovely night. Uh, Duchess as well, whatever your time is there. So, Merry Christmas everyone, let's see, here it is. Snow is falling all around me. Children playing, having fun. It's the season, love and understanding. Merry Christmas, everyone. Time for parties and celebrations. People dancing all night long. Time for presents and exchanging kisses. Time for singing Christmas songs. We're gonna have a party tonight. I'm gonna find that girl underneath the mistletoe and kiss by candlelight. Miss Swayin, Wreck is playing. All the old songs we love to hear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Bruno, I'm killing it with the cat here. <laughs> Definitely, I see if you can stand to sing and I'm breaking the windows. So, here's another little one to sing his out. If you can, I'm killing the cat, I'm killing my dog Fudge in the background with this, but why not? Still the night. Holy night, sleeps the world, head from sight, Mary and Joseph in stable and bare, watch all the child beloved and fair, sleeping in heavenly rest. Sleep in heavenly rest. So, guys, hope you all have a merry, merry Christmas. Mac Vegan, Fofkinzilla, and C Magic, Blue Ren, everybody else in the chat. There's so many to mention. Roro, let's make 2017 a great one. Duchess, a merry, merry Christmas to you. Love to you as well. And remember, binge on life. Mac Vegan as well. Lovely, lovely Christmas. Starve guilty feelings. Binge on life, pods negativity and star guilty feelings. I'm even forgetting my, my own outro. Speak to you all soon, guys. Hope you have a very Merry Christmas and speaks very, very soon.